In the Catholic Church, a dogma is a definitive article of faith that has been solemnly promulgated by the College of Bishops at an ecumenical council or by the Pope when speaking in a statement ex cathedra, in which the magisterium of the Church presents a particular doctrine as necessary for the belief of all Catholic faithful. For example, Christian dogma states that the resurrection of Jesus Christ is the basic truth from which salvation and life is derived for Christians. Dogmas regulate the language, how the truth of the resurrection is to be believed and communicated. One dogma is only a small part of the Christian faith, from which it derives its meaning. A dogma of the Catholic Church is defined as, "...a truth revealed by God, which the magisterium of the Church declared as binding." The Catechism of the Catholic Church states, the Church's magisterium asserts that it exercises the authority it holds from Christ to the fullest extent when it defines dogmas, that is, when it proposes, in a form obliging Catholics to an irrevocable adherence of faith, truths contained in divine revelation or also when it proposes, in a definitive way, truths having a necessary connection with these. Dogma can also pertain to the collective body of the Church's dogmatic teachings and doctrine. The faithful are required to accept with the divine and Catholic faith everything the Church presents either as solemn decision or as general teaching. Yet not all teachings are dogma. The faithful are only required to accept those teachings as dogma if the Church clearly and specifically identifies them as infallible dogmas. Not all theological truths have been promulgated as dogmas. A tenet of the faith is that the Bible contains many sacred truths, which the faithful recognize and agree with, but which the Church has not defined as dogma. Most Church teachings are not dogma. Cardinal Avery Dulles pointed out that in the 800 pages of the Second Vatican Council documents, there is not one new statement for which infallibility is claimed. Topic. Elements, Scripture and Tradition The concept of dogma has two elements, immediate divine revelation from scripture or sacred tradition, and, a proposition of the Church, which not only announces the dogma but also declares it binding for the faith. This may occur through an ex cathedra decision by a pope, or by an ecumenical council. The Holy Scripture is not identical with divine revelation, but a part of it. Scriptures were written later by apostles and evangelists, who knew Jesus. They give infallible testimony of his teachings. Scripture thus belongs to tradition in the larger sense, where it has an absolute priority, because it is the Word of God, and because it is the unchangeable testimony of the Apostles of Christ, whose fullness the Church preserves with its tradition. Topic. Dogma as divine and Catholic faith Dogma is considered to be both divine and Catholic faith, divine because of its believed origin, and Catholic because of belief in the infallible teaching binding for all. At the turn of the 20th century, a group of theologians called modernists stated that dogmas did not come from God but are historical manifestations at a given time. In the encyclical Pacendi Dominici Gregis, Pope Pius X condemned this teaching as heresy in 1907. The Catholic position is that the content of a dogma has a divine origin. It is considered to be an expression of an objective truth that does not change. The truth of God, revealed by God, does not change, as God himself does not change. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. However, truths of the faith have been declared dogmatically throughout the ages. The instance of a pope doing this outside an ecumenical council is rare, though there were two instances in recent times, the Immaculate Conception of Mary in 1854 and the Assumption of Mary into Heaven in 1950. A pope cannot make infallible proclamations without ascertaining that they are beliefs already held in some form throughout the Catholic Church. Both Pope Pius IX and Pope Pius XII consulted the bishops worldwide before proclaiming these dogmas. A movement to declare a third Marian dogma for mediatrix and co redemptrix was underway in the 1990s, an issue handled very delicately by the bishops at Vatican II. Topic: <laughs> Early uses of the term. The term dogma Catholicum was first used by Vincent of Larens 450, referring to what all, everywhere, and always believed. In the year 565, Emperor Justinian declared the decisions of the first ecumenical councils as law because they are true dogmata of God in the Middle Ages. The term doctrina catholica, Catholic doctrine, was used for the Catholic faith. 
Individual beliefs were labeled as articulus fidei, part of the faith. Ecumenical councils issue dogmas. Many dogmas, especially from the early church Ephesus, Chalcedon, to the Council of Trent, were formulated against specific heresies Holy Spirit only emanating from Father and not from Father and Son. Later dogmas Immaculate Conception and Assumption of Mary express the greatness of God in binding language. At the specific request of Pope John XXIII, the Second Vatican Council did not proclaim any dogmas. Instead it presented the basic elements of the Catholic faith in a more understandable, pastoral language, without changing the teachings of the Church. The last two dogmas were pronounced by popes, Pope Pius IX in 1854 and Pope Pius XII in 1950 on the Immaculate Conception and the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary respectively. They are cornerstones of Mariology. To some, this raises the question, why new dogmas are formulated almost 2,000 years after the resurrection of Christ. It is Catholic teaching that, with Christ and the Apostles, revelation is completed. Dogmas issued after the death of his Apostles are not new, but explications of existing faith. Implicit truths are specified as explicit, as was done in the teachings on the Trinity by the ecumenical councils. Karl Rahner tries to explain this with the allegorical sentence of a husband to his wife, I love you. This surely implies, I am faithful to you. In the 5th century Vincent of Larens wrote, in Commonatory, that there should be progress within the Church, on condition that it be real progress, not alteration of the faith. For progress requires that the subject be enlarged in itself, alteration, that it be transformed into something else. The intelligence, then, the knowledge, the wisdom of individuals as well of the whole Church, ought, in the course of ages and centuries, to increase and make much and vigorous progress, but yet only in its own kind, that is to say, in the same doctrine, in the same sense, and in the same meaning." Vincent commented on the first epistle to Timothy that Timothy, for Vincent, represented, "...either generally the universal Church, or in particular, the whole body of the prelacy," whose obligation is to possess or to communicate to others a complete knowledge of religion," called the deposit of faith. According to Vincent, the deposit of faith was entrusted and not "...devised, a matter not of wit, but of learning, not of private adoption, but of public tradition." Vincent expounded that you "...received gold, give gold in turn," and not a substitute or a counterfeit. Vincent explained that those who are qualified by a "...divine gift," should by wit, by skill, by learning. Expound and clarify. That which formerly was believed, though imperfectly apprehended. To understand. What antiquity venerated without understanding. And teach. The same truths. In a new way. The Church uses this text in its interpretation of dogmatic development. In 1870, the First Vatican Council quoted from Commonatory and stated, in the dogmatic constitution Dei Filius, that meaning of the sacred dogmas is perpetually to be retained, once they have been declared by the Catholic Church and, there must never be a deviation from that meaning on the specious ground and title of a more profound understanding. In 1964, the Second Vatican Council further developed this in Lumen Gentium. Topic. Theological certainty The magisterium of the Church is directed to guard, preserve and teach divine truths which God has revealed with infallibility A rejection of Church magisterial teachings is a de facto rejection of the divine revelation. It is considered the mortal sin of heresy if the heretical opinion is held with full knowledge of the Church's opposing dogmas. The infallibility of the magisterium extends also to teachings which are deduced from such truths fides ecclesiastica. These Church teachings or Catholic truths Veritates Catholici are not a part of the divine revelation, yet are intimately related to it. The rejection of these secondary teachings is not heretical, but involves the impairment of full communion with the Catholic Church. There are three categories of these Veritates Catholici. Conclusiones theologicae theological conclusions, religious truths deduced from the divine revelation and reason. Facta dogmatica dogmatic facts, historical facts not part of revelation, but clearly related to it. 
Truths of reason, presupposed philosophical definitions used in the definitions of dogmas, the theological certainties of all teachings, from the divine revelation to the least certain veritas catholica, are ranked as follows. De fide from the faith, the highest degree of certainty, considered part of the divine revelation and infallibly asserted. Fides ecclesiastica the faith of the church, church teachings that have been definitively decided on by the magisterium in an infallible manner. Sententia fide proxima, teaching proximate to the faith, church teachings that are generally accepted as divine revelation but not defined as such by the magisterium. Sententia ad fidem pertinens, or sententia theologicae certa, teaching pertinent to the faith, or theological a certain teaching, church teachings that the magisterium clearly decided for, albeit without claiming infallibility. Sententia communis, common teaching, teachings which are popular but within the filtered range of theological research. Sententia probabilis probable teaching, teachings with a low degree of certainty. Those of this certainty which are considered in agreement with the consciousness of the faith of the Church are called sententia pia pious opinion. Sententia bene fundata well-founded teaching, teaching that is well-reasoned but does not, however, rise to being called probable. Opinio tolerata tolerated opinion, opinion tolerated, but discouraged, within the Church. Topic. Papal bulls and encyclicals Pope Pius XII stated in Humani Generis, that papal encyclicals, even when they are not ex cathedra, can nonetheless be sufficiently authoritative to end theological debate on a particular question, nor must it be thought that what is expounded in encyclical letters does not of itself demand consent, since in writing such letters the popes do not exercise the supreme power of their teaching authority. For these matters are taught with the ordinary teaching authority, of which it is true to say, He who heareth you, heareth me. Luke chapter 10 verse 16, and generally what is expounded and inculcated in encyclical letters already for other reasons appertains to Catholic doctrine. But if the supreme pontiffs in their official documents purposely pass judgment on a matter up to that time under dispute, it is obvious that that matter, according to the mind and will of the pontiffs, cannot be any longer considered a question open to discussion among theologians. The end of the theological debate is not identical, however, with dogmatization. Throughout the history of the Church, its representatives have discussed whether a given papal teaching is the final word or not. In 1773, Father Lorenzo Ricci, hearing rumors that Pope Clement XIV might dissolve the Jesuit order, wrote, "...it is most incredible that the Deputy of Christ would state the opposite, what his predecessor Pope Clement XIII stated in the papal bull Apostolicum, in which he defended and protected us." When, a few days later, he was asked if he would accept the papal brief reverting Clement XIII and dissolving the Jesuit order, Ritchie replied that whatever the Pope decides must be sacred to everybody. In 1995, questions arose as to whether the apostolic letter Ordinatio Sacerdotalis, which upheld the Catholic teaching that only men may receive ordination, is to be understood as belonging to the deposit of faith. Pope John Paul II wrote, Wherefore, in order that all doubt may be removed regarding a matter of great importance, a matter which pertains to the Church's divine constitution itself, in virtue of our ministry of confirming the brethren cf. LK we declare that the Church has no authority whatsoever to confer priestly ordination on women and that this judgment is to be definitively held by all the Church's faithful. Dulles, in a lecture to U.S. bishops, stated that ordinatio sacerdotalis is infallible, not because of the apostolic letter or the clarification by Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger alone but because it is based on a wide range of sources, scriptures, the constant tradition of the Church, and the ordinary and universal magisterium of the Church. Pope John Paul II identified a truth infallibly taught over 2,000 years by the Church. Critics of ordinatio sacerdotalis point out, though, that it was not promulgated under the extraordinary papal magisterium magisterium as an ex cathedra statement, and therefore is not considered infallible in itself. Apparitions and revelations Private revelations have taken place within the Church since the very beginning. For example, the Our Lady of the Pillar appeared to James the Greater. Apparitions are not a part of apostolic tradition, since that would imply divine revelation is incomplete, which in turn would imply God can perfect himself. 
The Catholic Church distinguishes between the apparitions within divine revelation, such as the risen Jesus apparitions to the apostles and the sign of the woman in the Book of Revelation, and apparitions without divine revelation, such as Our Lady of Fatima and the apparitions to Saint Mary Magdalene, because the age of divine revelation was closed with the completion of the New Testament when the last of the apostles died, while Our Lady of the Pillar appeared during the Apostolic Age. The apparition is not a dogma since it is not part of the Catholic faith, in the Bible or in apostolic tradition. Tradition. It is a local tradition, which is distinct from apostolic tradition. Topic: <inaudible> Ecumenical aspects. Protestant theology since the Reformation was largely negative on the term dogma. This changed in the 20th century when Karl Barth, in Kirchliche Dogmatik, stated the need for systematic and binding articles of faith. The Creed is the most comprehensive, but not complete, summary of important Catholic dogmas. It was originally used during baptism ceremonies. The Creed is a part of Sunday liturgy. Because many Protestant churches have retained the older versions of the Creed, ecumenical working groups are meeting to discuss the Creed as the basis for better understandings of dogma. <laughs> Notes References Topic. Sources Bienert, Wolfgang Lexikon der Katholischen Dogmatik in German. Freiburg, Herder. Denzinger, Heinrich, Hunnermann, Peter, et al., eds. 2012. Enchiridion Symbolorum, a Compendium of Creeds, Definitions and Declarations of the Catholic Church 43rd ed. San Francisco, Ignatius Press. ISBN 0898707463. Dulles, Avery. The Survival of Dogma, Faith, Authority and Dogma in a Changing World. Garden City, New York, Doubleday. OCLC 610489855. Dulles, Avery. The Changing Forms of Faith. The Survival of Dogma. Garden City, New York, Doubleday pp. 17-31. OCLC 610489855. Dulles, Avery The Magisterium and Authority in the Church. In Divine, George. In Theology in Revolution, Proceedings of the College Theology Society. Staten Island, Society of St. Paul. pp. 29-45. ISBN 9780818901789. Dulles, Avery. 1969. Heinrich, Johann B. Huppert, Philip, ed. Lehrbuch der Katholischen Dogmatik in German. Mainz, Franz Kirchheim. OCLC 858663925. One or more of the preceding sentences incorporates text from a work now in the public domain, Vincent of Larence, Charles A. Hurtley, Trans, 1955 1894 by various publishers. The Commonatory of Vincent of Larence, for the antiquity and universality of the Catholic faith against the profane novelties of all heresies. In Schaff, Philip, Wace, Henry. Sulpicius Severus, Vincent of Larence, John Cassian. A Select Library of the Nicene and Post-Nicene Fathers of the Christian Church. Second Series. 11 reprint ed. Grand Rapids, B. Eerdmans. OCLC 16266414 via Christian Classics Ethereal Library, Ott, Ludwig Grundriss der Dogmatik in German. Freiburg, Herder. Rahner, Karl Theology and the Magisterium. Theological Digest, 4-17. Rahner, Karl Historical Dimensions in Theology. Theology Digest, 30-42. ISSN 0040-5728. Rahner, Karl What is a Dogmatic Statement? Theological Investigations. 5. pp. 42-66. Simmons, Francis Infallibility and the Evidence. Springfield, Illinois. Schmaus, Michael 1982 
Katholisch Dogmatik in German. Munchen.